this chapter we are going to discuss about biotechnology and an a completely new and in the current covid scenario the most important field of science that has been discussed a lot right so whenever we he- ever since this covid pandemic has started one thing that we keep hearing is the biotech companies are producing the vaccine the nasal type of vaccine rna based vaccine attenuated vaccines basically it's it's given to the work of pharmacological and biotech companies in india is we are very proud to say that india's biotech firms were able to come up with our own local uh, made in india vaccine which is the covaxin anyway so the role of biotechnology somehow has started evolving in a huge level more than what it was understood uh, through this covid pandemic unfortunately or fortunately that's the scenario normally biotechnology is something that is restricted to bio students who used to study about this as a course or as a career option but today the world has understood biotechnology and what is the requirement of it so in this point of view not only is this biotechnology a great career prospective but a future requirement for the betterment and also for the harmfulness of the human kind please remember just like a coin has two sides every science applicable science knowledge or science technology has both negative and positive sides depends on where you use it okay so let us understand biotechnology in more detail so that it makes our our view as biologists more un, open to the field of biotechnology so not only we can understand it but we can help others to understand it also right now biotechnology is the 20th century of shoot of modern biology that changed our daily lives as its products brought qualitative improvement to health in health and in food production it's a part of biology and it's something that has not come very late it's, it's something that has come up very recently and the main area of biology biotechnology's focus is health and when we are talking about health indirectly you're talking about the betterment of human life so this is betterment of human life how you can better a human life that is by providing nutritious food that's where it comes in food production and also in bettering and in giving a very good healthy environment but how is it helping in providing improving health well the main example is the vaccines which will be able to fight against harmful harmful conditions and in food productions you are able to have what is called as the genetically modified foods with improved nutritive values with, which can be provided in countries where the population suffers with undernourishment malnourishment like that of course there are a lot of ethical debates also that goes on between vaccines and gmos that's not what we are going to get it right now so the basic principle of underlying biotechnology is that some of the applications whatever whatever the principles are behind a biotechnological process what goes in the process of field of biotechnology what are the applications where it can be used that has always been discussed in this unit which includes two chapters that is principles of biotechnology and applications of biotechnology now biotechnology is not a process it's actually a field which includes multiple processes right it can be defined as a technique you can call it as a technique but today it's not just limited to a technique but it's a huge established discipline and in this biotechnology you are actually intermixing multiple interdisciplines like horticulture agriculture animal husbandry all of them are can be included together in this discipline of biotechnology in fact the word biotechnology was given by uh, a hungarian engineer who is called as karl irki so karl irki uh, is e r e k y in the 1917 he is an hungarian engineer and he coined the term biotechnology coined the term biotechnology now basically biotechnology deals with using living organisms or enzymes from an organism to produce products that are useful to human beings now when we see this sentence it feels like 
well it is not such an age old process right i mean let me hi highlight this using living organisms to produce products or in useful to humans now let me write an example here okay curd making second example wine making right so aren't these a very age old techniques that have been seen since the since since hum, as old as human civilization i mean in curd you have organisms like the lacto acid bacillus bacteria which converts milk into curd right and you have the yeast the brewer's yeast in wine which helps break down the grape juice causes fermentation and converts into an alcoholic wine right and these techniques are not new they are very old they are as old as human civilization we don't know how when wine started making we don't even can't say when we started making curd so that means that biotechnology if you trace the origin of it it is as old as the human civilization but in the recent years what happened is it has expanded this share the scopes and applicability something that was done at a very small scale without knowing in the recent years what happened is it is more restricted to the processes of producing genetically modified organisms that is whether you are producing genetically modified plants for the betterment of the agriculture and horticulture industry genetically modified organisms for the betterment of the animal uh, animals for the betterment of animal industry even when you are using these genetically modified organisms they can be used for as a nutritive index as um, to increase the food yield etc and etc basically what you are doing is you are increasing it, it it has become an important tool for the production of food crops for human health care for chemical industries so all of them it it has become synonymous these days it has become restricted it has become expanded and restricted to that field and the the simple works like wine making and curd making they are not a part of the biotechnology world anymore right so here are some top 10 genetically modified foods you have corn beet which is a gen, you have genetically modified corn you have genetically modified soy cotton seed papaya you have genetically modified rice yes peas you have lot of dairy products which were modified you have tomatoes which were modified potatoes which were modified canola which is rape seed oil is also modified you are going to see all of these applications in the next chapter but this is what is happening in the recent era now furthermore the processes include not only you are talking about the genetically modified organisms many other processes are also included like in vitro fertilization of test tube baby is also put under the field of biotechnology synthesizing and using gene that is the base of pcr something you know if you've got your p covid test done um you know that there is something called as an rt pcr right so that entire concept of pcr comes from biotechnology right then developing dna based vaccines here we have given influenza but i think we can as well as take covid as an example because thanks to covid we are so well aware of vaccines everybody is a vaccine expert these days right so and you have correcting a defective gene this is basically a completely different uh, subject it has become called as gene therapy now where uh, you have congenital genetic disorders that we have discussed in the a molecular basis of inheritance and principal basis of inheritance chapters so those genetic disorders you can they are trying to treat them by replacing or uh, treating that defective gene which is gene therapy which is now is evolving into a completely new discipline but that discipline is also based under biotechnology right now the european federation of biotechnology has given the definition that combines both traditional views and molecular emphasis please remember this is in a very important line 
which will be asked for need so basically biotechnology is the traditional view traditional view is what the the old age old practices of using microorganisms to produce products that are important for human life and modern molecular emphasis what are you using in modern molecular emphasis in modern molecular emphasis you're actually using the knowledge of genes what are you using here you're using the knowledge of dna you're using the knowledge of the um the genome knowledge then you're using the knowledge of biochemistry of small of biomolecules and all of these are studies at the molecular level and you're combining them ultimately producing a product that is very very important to human kind so it is said that biotechnology is the integration of natural science and engineering in order to achieve the applications of organisms cell parts thereof and molecular analogs of products and services a very complicated sentence but basically what they're talking is you're taking in science basic biology information you're also taking the information from engineering you're putting them in organisms or parts of the cells or even at the molecular level to produce products or use this knowledge for services so that's what it said basically utilizes the properties of our microorganisms exploits the cells cell constituents at industrial level for pro producing products that are essential for life and human welfare now let us understand the principles behind biotechnology there are two major techniques that enabled the birth of modern biotechnology they are the backbone of the biotechnology and they are genetic engineering right and the second one is tissue culture so these are the two major techniques that are associated with biotechnology and they are part and parcel of each other they are, they are inbuilt with each other right now basically in genetic engineering what you are doing is you are going to alter a genetic material you're going to take a genetic material you're going to alter this and you're going to put this changed genetic material into an organism so that the phenotype of the organism is changed okay so you're basically altering the dna or rna rna if it's if the organism is an rna based organism so you're basically changing the the, the genetic nature of the organism and we know that the genes control the genotype controls the phenotype so when you're altering the genotype you're thereby altering the phenotype so that is the basis of genetic engineering and the second one is tissue culture which involves the growth of only a particular microorganism or a cell in large quantities uh, for the manufacturing of biotechnological products like antibiotics vaccines and enzymes so basically what you're doing in tissue culture is you're going to take um, uh, you're going to raise a sterile contamination free contamination free means a microbial free environment um, and you're going to supply some nutritional media media is a medium for growth which is which acts as a food and you're going to allow organisms whether it can be a microorganism itself whether it can be a eukaryotic cell it can be a part of the plant of animal cell part of the um, maybe an animal tissue or something so basically you're growing them in a large scale in a very controlled environment that is called as tissue culture here even though in the diagram we are seeing plant it can happen to animals also all right so this tissue culture is actually a chemical engineering process a kind of a chemical engineering process and both of them are used in the creation or the combining of a biotechnological product now the basic concept behind genetic engineering you have to understand is that sexual reproduction is the one that is associated with variations and recombinations now this is something we have been see, studying right from our early days in childhood that sexual reproduction provides new combinations and variations whereas asexual reproduction what it does it practically provides you the same copy of the parental genome 
so this variations they are very very beneficial to the population of any population whether it's plants or animals because it is producing new varieties and we have we know that if there is new varieties then these varieties if they are better adaptable to certain conditions and they can thrive and survive well right now the same thing if you look it can be done for plants also now we know that in plants or animal breeding we are using the traditional method of hybridizing jaise ki suppose let us say that i have the a cow which was giving 4 liters of milk okay but it is a it is a very weak cow it gets you know it, it 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 even though it at one lactation if it is producing four milks four milk it is a very weaker cow so i cannot take four liters of milk from it and it there is no guarantee that every day it will produce four liters of milk right now i had a i have found out that a few a neighbor of mine had a cow which was very very strong but um It, what happened was it it it's uh, the the its milk yielding capacity is very very low it's very strong its milk yielding capacity is low it gives milk every day but maybe 1 liter so i get an idea why not i have a cow with great every day milk yielding strength so that it can give milk every day and give 4 liters every day so i'm getting both the best of both worlds so now both i can't mate two cows right so what i'm going to do i'm going to find out who is the uh, the the father the hypothetical father of the cow uh, the ox from there and the um this cow and i'm going to create an an hybridization an artificial and animal hybridization where i take um this cow and i mate it with the oxen which is produced the strong cow or i might take the this the strong cow and i mate it with an oxen which is produced the um, high milk yielding cow basically something i'll try to do but intermediate i'll get i will never get a complete 4 ml milk yielding everyday milk yielding very very strong cow i might get a cow which is stronger but gives only 2 and 1/2 liters of milk and i should be happy with that right that's a traditional method the same logic is for um, for plants also i have a plant a rice plant of rice plant variety which gives very good grain but it is very susceptible to pests similarly i have another uh, rice plant variety which is pest resistant but gives very low yield uh, what i'll do if i'm a traditional farmer i'll take these two varieties i'll try to create a hybridized a cross pollinate them create a inter hybrid which is both rich yielding and resistant to pests right this is the traditional methods but now here what you are going to do the same thing see we are talking about but now what happens here is we are not in specifically targeting specific genes you are also getting the undesirable ones see what i want i want the pest the, the, the disease resistance and the high yield but i might get some other unwanted characters also and i cannot stop it because they are traditional hybridization procedures through genetic engineering what you are going to do is you are going to only pick up the genes that you want if i want from say plant a only the high yielding gene i'll just take that gene if i want from plant b only its disease resistance i'll take that gene and i'll put them together and i'll create a new variety which is both which has both the beneficial genes but no harmful genes so in this way genetic engineering is a little over or a little better than the traditional hybridization procedures now let us talk about the steps that are involved in genetic engineering so what are the steps that are involved in genetic engineering in genetic engineering right now the first step is creation of a recombinant creation of a recombinant molecule let me write down the steps then i'm going to explain each step so the first step is creation of the recombinant molecule which is also called as the rdna molecule 
right and now because you are using rdna molecule you are producing rdna molecule so these steps of genetic engineering they are also called as rdna technology they are also called as rdna technology but it is again one and the same both mean the same next the second step is insertion of insertion of the rdna molecule into host cell into a particular host cell right then third one is replication of the molecule replication of the rdna molecule right and fourth step is production of the production of the rdna product whatever product you want to produce so these are the major four steps now everything will be the same till the third step but the difference will start from the fourth step where if your concept is production then you will enter into the zone of tissue culture okay and if your concept is not production of of uh, product then you will be in tissue culture but you will take a different step altogether so till the first three steps are common for all biotechnology experiments that's why this is called as steps of genetic engineering or steps of rdna technology so let us take each and every step in individually so we are going to talk here about the first step that is creation of the rdna molecule creation of the rdna molecule so for this what are the requirements you need two things for this one will be a vector and another one will be the foreign gene foreign gene gene or what we'll do is we'll just write it as goi which is gene of interest right now what is a vector all that we're going to study in the next coming uh, sections but just this is just an overview of the process so you have the cell human cell now what we'll consider is we will call this human cell as the source of dna it is the source of dna dna of what which contains this one our gene of interest we are talking about no so this will be the source of the gene of interest so you are going to from there isolate the gene here we have taken the insulin gene it can be any gene similarly here i am taking a bacterium which is a second organism okay and from this second organism i have isolated the plasma dna which will act as a vector molecule now what is a vector why we are taking plasmids should plasmids be only take you you will get hundreds of questions ma'am what is a vector what is a plasmid why should i why should we only take plasmid why can't we take the the bacterial dna we will answer all of that in the coming sections just recollect the procedure in this section okay so you are taking the vector and you are isolating the gene of interest and cutting the vector what are you have done you have cut the vector cutting of vector is done by a specific group of enzymes called restriction enzymes ta ta da again doubt ma what is a restriction enzyme please just remember the terms we are going to deal with each and every of these particular terms in detail and i am going to even explain how they have isolated the dna from the human cell we are going to de in detailly study the entire process of our dna technology clearly okay what we are just doing is an overview of the steps right so after cutting them you are taking the foreign gene or the gene of interest and the vector and you are joining together by using an enzyme dna ligase so this structure is called recombinant dna or rdna molecule so now if you have to tell what is an rdna molecule rdna molecule is nothing but it is what is an rdna molecule ma what what will you write about it it is nothing but it is the gene of interest plus vector 
combined together in a single molecule is called as your RDNA molecule. Okay, so the first step is the creation of the RDNA molecule which is done. Now let's go to the second step. So what is the second step? The second step is insertion of the RDNA molecule, insertion of the RDNA into a host cell, host cell. So you're going to insert this whatever RDNA molecule you have made, you're going to put it in a host cell. Now this host cell can be anything, it can be prokaryotic cell or it can be a eukaryotic cell. We will go with them in detail. As I'm saying, we are going to discuss each and everything about it in detail in the coming, in the upcoming sections. Right. So, here you have the RDNA molecule with the same insulin gene. Right. So, now you are putting it in a host cell. So, this is the host cell. Host cell. And here this host cell is a bacteria. It can be a eukaryotic cell or a prokaryotic cell, anything. And what you are going to do, you are going to insert it into the host cell. So, you are basically transferring it and cloning. Now, what does this term mean? What does this unique term mean? Cloning mean. Now, cloning. Cloning means it is practically producing identical copies. Okay, when you say it's a clone, that means it's a copy of an exact replica, an identical copy of something, right? So, when you say offsprings are clones of parents, that means offsprings are a Xerox copy of the parent. So, here when you are doing cloning, that means what? What does the cloning here mean? The cloning here means you are producing multiple identical copies, produce multiple identical copies of the RDNA molecule. Okay, so for that you need to put it in, to, to even clone it, first you have to put it in a host organism. So that is what is done, that is the second step, that is insertion into the host cell. Then comes the third step. Now, what is the third step? The third step is the replication of RDNA molecule. So, you have to make sure that this RDNA molecule, it replicates within the host and multiple copies of it are produced. That means what? If you want the DNA, the RDNA molecule to be replicated, you want the host also should replicate and produce multiple copies correct so basically what you are doing in this step you are doing the cloning in this step okay and as you can see in this diagram you already have the recombinant one rdna molecule you have inserted it into the host and when you are allowing the host cell to replicate so here what happened here you are having the replication replication of the host cell and also the rdna molecule so these are producing clones and each clone contains a rdna copy Correct? So, that is one part. The next part that is highlighted here, this part is for the fourth step. This part is for the fourth step that is production of the product of the RDNA product. So, that production is happening in this fourth step. So, here what happens then if you want to produce the product, as I have said, you are going to go into tissue culture step. So, you are going to go through the tissue culture step if you specifically want the product. Otherwise, this is, you can say, ma'am, what, this is also tissue culture, this is also tissue culture. What is the difference between the both? See, this tissue culture that is, is specific for product, whereas the tissue culture that will be here happening, this is only for replication and division. 
so two types of tissue culture are associated here the tissue culture where you are only carrying out cloning there you will just provide the media that is required for the continuous division of the cell and produce multiple copies of the cells then you isolate the rdna molecules and you are going to store it that's it but if you want the product then you are going to skip certain more extra things to the media of the tissue culture so that you are forcing the cell to produce the product and release it so that's the difference between the world. so these are the steps that are involved in the genetic engineering or rdna technology that is one creation of the recombinant dna molecule second is the insertion of the rdna molecule into the host cell third the replication of the rdna molecule or the cloning and fourth one which again varies from product to product that is production of the um, of the rdna product okay so now let us so from the third step the changes they the, the changes will keep on happening in the in the in the overall procedure based on the outcome based on the experimental design okay so who did this like, biotechnology work first what was the first organism who did all of this let us see that in this next video for more content like share and subscribe to www.i-win dot in